Hi everybody, it's uh, Purushayati, your professor again. I hope you're in great spirits. I hope you have been um, being. I, I, you've, you've been very productive. Um, I've been. I hope that you're you're healthy, and we're going to continue now with our um, story of uh, of the ancient period. Yeah. So remember that we talked about the um, the Egyptians in the second millennium BC BCE. Yeah. Um, the Middle Kingdom and the New Kingdom we covered during that period. We covered the Hittites coming and during the second millennium BC and their history and how they came to um, sort of connect with the uh, Egyptians in the second millennium BC. BCE. We talked about the Assyrians and how they at a at a certain point in this history, right, at two two points in this history, basically, well, at one point in this history, uh, created an empire, right, that again came into contact with the Egyptians and, of course, Eastern Mediterranean, and they, in fact, went and in the first millennium, they conquered Egypt, right? Um, so we have talked about the world that we have been dealing in Western Asia and Africa, right, thus far, right? I, I, we've been dealing with the second millennium history of this part of the world, right? Now we want to move, well, we, we naturally move a little bit to, to the West because that is the way things develop. But before we move into the West, I want you to keep in mind, right, the the directions of Hittite, say, trade, right, um, into what is Eastern Europe and into towards what is, uh, you know, um, in, in towards the islands and on the western coast of Anatolia and so forth. I want you to keep in mind that um, Assyrians, Egyptians, Hittites, Mesopotamians, right, have been, you know, it has, a, we have covered already a millennium and a half, right, so a lot has happened already, right? So, and we talked about this, that, um, okay, so now, now what we want to do is to move west, right? We are moving west to, excuse me, uh, we need a different color here. How about this? And let's go here. I'm sorry, and take away that. And yes, so uh, remember that the Hittites, right, were already trading this way. Anatolia, the Assyrians were coming to Eastern Mediterranean, right? Um, and and uh, and now we are going to the world that is called the Aegean. Sea, right? Aegean Sea. Remember. And, and 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 this is the, the 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 region right that we consider the asian world right and if you remember our our um pangea yeah you guys this comes very very handy right our pangea for us right you see if you connect these two parts of the earth right together they kind of fit in I'm sorry. They kind of fit in, right? Here. Um, together, yeah? So, so, uh, so you can imagine, right, that, that for one thing, we're dealing with the same climatic conditions, right, between these two worlds, right? This world and this world, yeah? 
So, okay, so we're going to the Asian world and already we know, right, during the second millennium, right, we have already far flung trade and communication, right? You know, Egyptians with the Eastern Mediterranean, Egyptians with the Nubians, Nubians with Inner Sahara, all of them with as we will see the Asian world, all of Africa, you basically, you know, in one in one way or another, right? Um, through Egypt and uh, to uh, to the Fertile Crescent, right? And to the Anatolian world, right? Remember, we were talking about a world in which you have um, emperors and. Um, and and land based empires, great land based empires, right, and diplomatic relationships and heavy heavy trade between these empires and an exchange of knowledge and arts and techniques and whatnot. This has already all taken place, right, in Africa and in Western Asia, right? So we are now more moving, actually, we are, what we are, we are moving west, but we are moving now um, to Eastern Mediterranean, right? Um, the, the world of Eastern Mediterranean, the Asian world, uh, age of far-flung uh, communications, right? And uh, the influence of these civilizations that we talked about reaching, obviously, the Asian world, right? The cumulative history that we've been discussing thus far, my friends, full of innovations, full of technological um, sort of um, um, technological innovations, full of learning. Remember the libraries of uh, the the. Hittites and 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 the and the Assyrians, which themselves had you know collected the knowledge of the world, you know, the 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 contemporary world of their time, which has a great deal of knowledge, right? Um, all of this reaches the Asian world, right? And this becomes the fertilizing influence of older centers on the outlying regions when. You know these these outlying regions take the whole thing right and create a so to speak unique path of cultural evolution of their own right. So when we are talking about um, the Asian civilization, we are uh, at this time right in the second millennium. We are talking about the Minoan Cretes, yeah, the Crete, the island of Crete and the Mycenaean Greeks, right? The Minoans and the Mycenaeans. We we're talking about um, these two, excuse me. Yeah. Um, these new, uh, two centers of civilization, and once we go back here, yeah, we will see um, Hmm. The the island of Crete is not here, but the Mycenaeans, my friends, right? This is where the Mycenaeans are going to be located. Mycenaeans, when we get to them, right? This is the Asian world. Um, the Cretans, the Crete island of Crete, or the um, Minoans. Right, the Minoan civilization takes place on the island of Crete. Right, the Mycenaeans, and then of course the the mainland Greeks. And to which we will get later on. Right, so um, so all of this influence, right, from here, from. This is, say, your Egypt, right, from the North Africa, right, yeah? All of this influence is now moving, right, uh, to the Asian world, right? So we want to know what is the, uh, what is the, um, the topography of, of the 
uh, Asian world. We will get to that in a second. Um, but for now, I want I want us to consider the myth, the myths of these uh, of of the Asian world, right? So um, of course, you know, we we saw the Minoans, the Mycenaeans, and the Greeks later on, right? The Greek poets, i.e. I, those who came later on, right, um, like the poet Hesiod, right, and the Greek poet Hesiod, right, looked at their own history, remember our definitions of history, right, they, they, they looked back on their uh, history and it was ancient to them because they themselves came onto the scene only on uh, 500 BCE, around 500 BCE, right? Um, so they are, they're quite, you know, they, compared to Minoans, they're actually postmodern, right? On, in, in a sense, right? Um, but anyway, so, um, so they're looking back, right? Uh, and they're, they're looking at their past. And because so, so long has passed since their past, right? Um, not enough knowledge has has passed, been passed down, right? So they looked at this past as their heroic age, right? A heroic age, right? Um, a semi legendary age, uh, so to speak, right? Uh, well, not basically a heroic age, right? Where um, great men mingled with gods, right? Yeah, and so it descri describes this world, right? And 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 modern scholars, of course, you know, thought of that these are fables, right? Among these fables, amongst what we thought that was the fables that the Greeks handed handed down about their ancients, right? Um, was the tales of um, Theseus, right, uh, and the miniature, right, and the Trojan Wars, right, um, and the wanderings of Odysseus, right, in in the book of Odysseus, right, um, by Homer, right, the van the Trojan Wars again of Homer, right, eighth century BCE, right. Um, you had the, the Trojan Wars, as we will see, which deals actually with the relationship, right, of the, um, of the, of, 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 um, of this, um, Asian world, right, um, with, uh, what we will see is it, it's called, the Ionian, Ionian region and islands here of Western Anatolia, right? Homer, uh, in his uh, in his epic. Um, Odyssey, right, and then later on in Uly um, Ulysses, right, um, describes a war, right, that takes place between um, Mycenaeans and the Trojans, right, the Trojans. So this is also part of the epics that um yeah the trojan wars that homer is is um, is describing but then besides that there is the tales of theseus and miniature right the tales of the tales of theseus and the miniature right that are the tales that describe the 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 ancient history ostensibly of minoan crete right Right now, um, your book says, or uh, one of the textbooks from which I have gotten my information, right, says that we thought, right, i.e., um, 
you know, 20th century man and 19th century man, right, thought that the Greek civilization begins only in 1776 um, BCE, right, when the first Olympic Games occurred, right? So this Olympic Games that we, you know, uh, some of us are, are really, really excited about, right? The origins of it goes back to 8th century BCE. This is another thing that you could converse about on uh, over dinner, my friends. Um, okay, so so one of these tales of the tale is the tale of Tessos and the miniatures, right? And um, but but we thought that these were myths, right? Uh, and 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 we thought that the Greek history, which is what was our preoccupation, right, begins only in seventeen seventy six. BCE. Now we will see how we are wrong about this uh, by uh, about this um, what well, the book goes on uh, to to say that we are actually wrong about this because we know that the civilization of the Asian world we now know that the civilization of the Asian world is also supposed to date back to two thousand. BCE. Now, here is where things get political, my friends, right? Um, you are talking about, again, you're talking about a certain portrayal of history, right? Um, we are getting closer to the West and so on and so forth. So we'll get up to, into that all of, into all of this um, in this session, right? But for now, I want you to look, concentrate on the on the landscape of of this part of the world, right? Of um of the Asian world, and I want you to realize, right, that the islands that we are talking about in the Asian worlds, and there are very many islands there, right, like that of southern Greece, right, is mostly rocky and arid. Right, there are small plains in between these, uh, you know, hills. Right, that make your land the land that you can um, produce uh, agriculture, produce on it. Right, uh, first of all, very small, and secondly, suited only for certain kinds of grains and uh, grape vines from which you get you made wine, right, and olive trees, right, like, you know, when you're talking about the Mediterranean cuisine to this day, right, olives is a central part of it, right, and then, and then in between, right, you would have sheep and goats uh, grazing on the slopes, right, and um, so this is, this is the landscape of this part of the world, right, and um, you, as you can see, you have sharply indebted coastlines, right, um, all over, all over basically, right, um, which make it, uh, make, the, make the land um, ideal for creating natural harbors, there are small islands that dot the, uh, this part of the world, if you look at it, right, a beautiful, beautiful islands that uh, all of us should should uh, get a chance to go to um, at least once during our lifetime hopefully right um, and uh, and um, and and obviously yeah um, your land is surrounded by the by waters right so what better way of communicating with each other but through waters so if you want to communicate through waters what do you need you need ships right and you need a, a sort of a um, sort of a, a, you, you need maritime capabilities, right? And that is what you develop, right? And uh, when you're surrounded by by uh, waters, right? And especially if your land is not, you know, is 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 uh, sort of um, deprived of natural, um, other natural. Uh, uh, 
givens in topography, right? Um, and 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 therefore you have little that you produce can produce on your own land. You have to go to the other parts of the world in order pr to procure procure right. Um, what you needed. You didn't have timber, you, you need to import timber. From where do you tim uh, import timber, my friends? You remember now, right? By, from, from the eastern Mediterranean coastlines. You didn't have metals, imported metals. You didn't have, you know, foodstuffs, right? You imported these from, uh, from, from abroad. Egypt provided you probably, Egypt was your gra granary, right? Um, so the, the, the rise and fall of these two civilizations that we will be talking about, um, Minoans and later on Myce Mycenaeans and the Greeks, right? Uh, well, it was, was closely tied to their commercial relationships with it with which 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 naturally had to be uh, performed these commercial relationships in a political context right yeah i mean now imagine the 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 the, the, the situation between us and the chinese and the commercial relationships and you know and our political relationship right so so here's here's where where the where the uh, where the uh, hegemonical writing of history begins, right? Uh, like a, an example, a, a really fantastic example of it, right? That by two thousand BCE, right, the first yeah Crete house, the first European civilizations. Now I want you to 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 look at your map, my friends, right? I want you to look at the Greek peninsula, right? And I want you to look at where it looks at, right? Look at, first of all, look at how close it is, right? To our definition of the so-called Middle East, right? In fact, remember I said the, the Pangea really, really, becomes helpful here, right? And you see the influences that have been exerted on, 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 on Eastern Mediterranean by its surrounding world. And incidentally, nothing was coming here, right, from, from Northern Greece or, or Italy or, yeah, um, as we will see, um, North Africa, yes, yeah, but, but uh, not much from, from, uh, from uh, from the centers, so to speak, of the of the Western world, right? Okay, so but but see how we we are we are and uh, it is depicted for us, right? That the, the Euro first European civilization appears by the Minoans. Mind you, we do not know who the Minoans were because we have not deciphered their lang uh, their script, right? We have not deciphered their script, which is. Um, to which we will uh, we will um, get to right and but even here we must admit that advanced technologies found in Western Asia like just found right yeah <laughs> and northeastern Africa right um, where we're we're going into this uh, first European civilization to begin with at any rate. What is said, what is in, interesting about this small island and the, and the civilization that develops around it, right? Um, and the synthesis, basically, right? Of all the cultural elements, right? That went into it, which, which we, we know very well now, right? From the Hittites to Assyrians to, we will see later on, um, you know, Eastern Mediterraneans, Africans, Egyptian, I mean, Egyptian Africans, and, and the rest of Africa, like all those technological advances are going to make the, the center, this, this small island, right, the, 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 the house of first European civilization, right, European civilization, my friends. Right? So anyway, the Minoan civilization, we are told, we, we know it has a central gover centralized co government. It, we are told that it has monumental buildings. Of course, we will see um, 
the civilization was basically what we are talking about, uh, about the Minoan civilization, was, was started from an island, right? And the island, right, the political structure of which was apparently not really kingship in the sense that we had it in Western Asia, Asia right, um, was, was such that there was a palace kingdom, right, in, in other words, in the Minoans, right, as we see the island um, had the capital of the, of the civilization in Kenosis, right, and everything was centralized in this, you could say, monumental, Uh, palace complex, right? But when we are talking about monumental, we are not talking about a la Assyrians or a la, uh, a la Egyptians, uh, yeah? We're talking about um, sort of bureaucratically complicated sort of, yeah, at any rate. They had Bronze Age metal metallurgy because they were in the Bronze Age. They had obviously a, a writing system and of course they had the record keeping system. And your record keeping system went back to 3000 BCE in the region, right? So, okay, and then this is the context of it as we have talked about. I want you to look at the city of Troy here, right? See the city of Mycenae in the island of Mycenae, look at the Minoan Cretes, okay, I'm sorry, it's two, 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 okay, um, I want you to look at the, uh, figure out the Mycenaeans, I'm sorry, we need this card, okay, uh, here we go, the Mycenaeans, the Minoans on the island of Crete, on the island of Crete, right? And you see, this is another center of them. There's uh, Thera. You and behold, my friends, yeah? Which is, what is this, right? This is, this is the island of Cyprus. And what is this itty bitty sea here, huh, my friends? This is the famous, famous Dead Sea. Right, um, which is in the land of Palestine, Jerusalem, Judea, Israel at that time, and we will get to that. Right, get to it. Um, so, and I and I want you. Okay, so this is the this is the context. We remember we had the context, and now you look at the Minoan civilization, yeah, and you see what is, what are the important aspects of it. It was that you had a number of palaces, right? Um, and then obviously you had the higher echelon in, in which, you know, all kinds of populations lived in order to, it is palace complexes, so the bureaucracy is there. Um, you know, the, the, the workers are there, the accountants are there, the scribes are there, the... Um, you know that's where you 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 measure your um, your um, trade income and uh, and and taxation and 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 so on and so forth. Okay, so then and then you have your bigger um, bigger aristocracy, so to speak, who lived in the country houses marked in blue, right? And and these are, are your um, the 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 black dots are your tombs and your sacred caves and your mountains, right? You 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 can see um, uh, you can you can sort of stay on this map uh, and 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 check it out. Yeah, my friends. So this is this is the context of the Minoan Crete civilization. Now the Minoans, right? Because they are seafaring people, right? Of course, they 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 um they travel, right? And they establish colonies, right? In other parts of their uh, of their neighborhood, so to speak. Yeah, uh, trade colonies most probably, right? 
um, which which you see here is in in the Ionian Islands and in various islands across the Asian Sea, where where you see the influence of the Minoan world, right? Um, and, 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 and this is also the trade route of the Minoans, part of the trade route, because not to forget, right? <coughs> Excuse me, my friends. <clears throat> so, so this was the Minoan civilization, right? Um, compared to its, its um, mainland uh, successors, right, the Greeks, um, Greeks um, they, were, they were primitive, right, in, in the backwaters of the Minoan civilization, right? But in the 19th century, remember, here we are, the age of colonization, right? You have gone to a new land, you know this land, the lands that you have colonized or you are ruling over imperialistically one way or another, right? You know that these are ancient, ancient lands, right? In which probably there are there are relics of the ancient world, right? So what do you do? You begin digging in this in this um, ancient world, right? And and you know this is you see in the nineteenth century in Western Asia, it is the age of excavations and the age of discoveries um, by the Europeans who by nineteenth century, right? It's a it's somewhat a. a, a history by the time we finish we will be in the first millennium ce my friends right um therefore the first thousand years and 19th century takes us only the second thousand years which we are already covering right so uh, uh, anyway um so um there is there is another um amateur art, um german archaeologist by the name of heinrich Schliemann, right? Schliemann, Heinrich Schliemann, um, who who sets out following, right? This this um, itinerary of the epic of Homer in 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 um, in the Odyssey, right? And he finds the city of Troy, right? in northwestern Anatolia. He follows an epic. And he follows the itinerary of an epic. Right, my friends? An epic that we think has no historical right basis to it. But but here comes this guy, right? Heinrich. And he says, no, no, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I have the means, right? Um, Probably he, he he is probably very well to do to be able to do this, right? And he says, you know what? I'm going to follow the the itinerary of Homer's, um, you know, um, wars, Trojan wars, right? And I'm going to go from from Mycenae, right, to the city of, uh, to the city of uh, Homer, and in and, and, and I mean to the city of Troy. Right in Ionian Islands, and I'm going to, in fact, you know, dig around, dig around the 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 Asian Sea, right. So he comes, right, and first and foremost, lo and behold, there is such a thing called the city of Troy. The city of Troy in the epic, yeah, in the monumental epic of Homer, circa 800 BCE written circa 800 BCE, yeah, there is such a thing called the city of Troy, and its name is, is Ilium, right? Its Greek name is Ilium. And this is how it stands, right? Uh, I mean, right now you see this is, these are the Turkish Straits, right? Um, Bosphorus, right? And this is Dardanelles, Black Sea, Sea of Marmara here, right? And the Asian Sea. Right, and and of course the Asian world, right? That yeah, you see, it also involves obviously, obviously, Anatolia, right? So um, 
so the uh, Schlimmen, right? Um, also, also the dog in 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 uh, uh, in in Crete, right? And they found the um, the palaces of the Minoans, right, in the city of Crete, right? And because amongst the 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 um, the the traditions that were handed down right by ancient Greeks was the fact by ancient Greeks themselves right was the fact that there was in in the island of Crete in the in Minoa in Min, Mino, in the island of Crete a king Min, my, Minos right yeah so therefore right. Uh, archaeologists came and named this civilization the Minoan civilization, right? This King Minos, we are told, right, in these in these legends, yeah, that he ruled a vast empire. Now the archaeological su surveys shows that in fact, yes, yes, the the island of Crete, right, had colonies. The old the around the world that we I I I constructed, I showed you, right before this right um and uh, and and later on the greeks themselves remembered that and uh, crete was home to many ships and skilled craftsmen right so okay so what was the legend now we finally get to the legend right of of uh, of the legends that the greeks told about this king minos well, this King Minos, we were told, right, was the king of um, Greece, right, and he was in touch, right, the 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 king of, uh, I mean, the king of, um, there's something wrong with me today, my friends. You bet, um, I beg your pardon. But anyway, um, with the ki the king of Crete, yeah, King Minos, right, and uh, there is the, the legend had it that King Minos. Right, Minos made Ageos, King Ageos, right, who was the king of Athens, right, um, and we will we will see later on where Athens is on the main on the main peninsula, main Greek peninsula, yeah, in in the very southeastern corner of it, right, that um, that uh, therefore closest to Crete, right, that the that. Minos made Ageos, right, the king of Athens, every year to sacrifice seven boys and seven girls by sending them to the to Crete, right, to Minoa, right, um, in in the labyrinth that was in Minoa, in the capital, right, city, uh, Kenosis, um, where there was a, mi a monster. Right, a half man, half bull monster who would eat right these seven boys and and seven girls that 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 uh, Greece sent us sent him. And meaning what? Meaning what? Meaning that yeah, this legend tells you right that the Greeks were less powerful right than the Minoans, and that the the Minoans had actually control over the Greek, um, the, uh, you know, the Athenian, at least, parts of the Greek, uh, Greece, right? Um, so, so every year they had to do this till one day, finally, right, Theseus, right, which is the son of Aegos, the king of Athens, right, and comes and c kills the miniature in 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 Crete, right. So Athens, my friends, is somewhere here, right, and and here is uh, the the. Okay, how do you spell it? The Minotaur, right? The Minotaur. Half man, half in the palace of Knossos, in the labyrinth, right. Okay, so this is a um, sort of um, a, a rendition of the 14th century Italian poets um, 
part of Inferno, right, where you have um, you have the miniature, right, eating, uh, attempting to eat the the Greek and the Grecian fellows, right, and here you see the king of Athens, right, Aegos, right, uh, recognizing his son Theosus, right, when he goes and kills the um, the um, the uh, the Minotaur, right, uh, and returns back to Athens, right. So once again, this is this is your um, your depiction, right, of um, of the Asian world, right. And here is a, a depiction, a reimagination of the in ancient city of Kenosis, which was the you know center of the Minoan civilization, which was an enormous basically palace complex, right, with so many rooms, right, and so many probably hallways and whatnot, right, that in fact the, the labyrinth that we were talking about, right, um, historians not now argue was nothing more than this palace complex in which you could actually get lost, right, um, Anyway, here we have the ruins of the palace at Knossos, right? And this is a bust of miniature, remember? Um, half animal, right? Half, um, half human, right? Um, half human, half, um, half animal, right? And this is a 16th century gem. Now, 16th century, remember, my friends, is the time of Renaissance, right? And lo and behold, the Medici. This is the Medici family, one of the most powerful ru uh, um, uh, rulers, right, of, 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 of Italy, right, of the family, right, uh, in the Renaissance, right? And they have a gem, right, yeah? The gem, a gem, a jewelry, a piece of jewelry, right, um, which is six of belongs to the sixteenth century, the t the time that they were living, right. Their family was at the height of its power, and and on it, right, there is depicted the minotaur of the uh, of the labyrinth of Kenosis, right. Again, you see, and uh, it is the roots of. Western, we have decided that it's the roots of Western civilization, right? And 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 uh, and um, you know, up until the nineteenth century, of I mean, in the nineteenth century itself, of course, we have many artistic dis depictions of Theseus slaying the Minotaur, right? Uh, our our amateur uh, archaeologists. Right, and also identified on the Greek um, mainland, right, the uh, the home of the king of Mycenae, right, um, King Agamemnon, one of the main figures of in Homer's um, Odyssey, right, uh, epic, right. Um, so the, he finds also not only the city of Troy, right, but also the 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 home of the, one of the main uh, protagonists of 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 the epic of Homer, King Agam Ag um, Agamemnon, right. Um, soon afterwards, here we are, the British archaeologist Evan, right. Um, discovers Kenosis on Crete, right? Um, and, and, and he realizes that the palace at Kenosis predates all the citadels on the Greek mine, uh, mainland. So he, he figures out that the palace at Kenosis is actually older than the rest, right? Here is Sir Arthur Evans, right? You see his... his uh, um, epithet of Sir, right? Uh, he have been, he has been anointed 
um, by, by the Queen or the King of England, right? And, and um, here he is in the island of Crete, having discovered Cretan Minoan pottery, right? Which was one of the, one of the uh, instruments for finding the extent of Minoan influence were these same, very same potteries, right? And this is the aerial view of the palace of Knossos, right, my friends? And this is a map of it, right? A throne room, central courtroom, queen's bathroom, right? The western court, a corridor for pr procession, and so on, and, and the priest king fresco, right? And so on, and so forth, right? Um, so Evans called this, as we said, the Minoan civilization, right? And dominating the Aegean, right? Um, so the discoveries of Schliemann and Evans, listen to this, my friends, forced the scholars to revise entirely the history of Western civilization. Oh, we are so enlightened, right? That we are finally enlightened about the history of Western civilization, right? And that is the fact that the history of the Greeks, right, goes back actually to 2,000 years ago, right? Now, but the Minoans, the identity of Minoans, unlike the Greeks who were Indo-Europeans and part of the Indo-European migrations as part of the Indo-European migrations have, had come to Greece, right, to the Greek peninsula, right? Um, they are Indo-Europeans, we know that, right? But Minoans, we don't know what, what they are, right? We don't know whether they are Semitic, whether they are Indo-Europeans, whether they belong to another, a, a different population, like, like, the, um, like the Hyksos and like the Kassites, right, my friends? There are, there are populations that we, we, we still don't know. In, to this day, we don't know. Um, uh, how how we could um, categorize, categorize them ethnolinguistically, right, as part of the ancient world, uh, at any rate, right. Um, so the widespread, and they realized that the widespread, but um, anyway, um, their writing has not been deciphered. So how did, did we did we know that they had this extensive realm sort of under their con uh, cultural influence? Where, as I said, uh, their pottery and other artifacts that are spread around the Mediterranean, right, were apparently very, very um, demand in demand, right? Uh, and but but of course, of course, you can see the influence of Egyptian, Syrian, Mesopotamian uh, influences in all aspects of their civilization, from their palaces to their central government, and in the systems of um, right. Uh, writing. So one of the things that one of the other things that we don't know about the Cretans is is what was their political stru structure, right? In contrast, look at the way this is put. In contrast to grand wars depictions of kings. Hello, hello. They mean mean to connect you, yeah, to modern kings of Middle East, right? In contrast to the uh, grand wars depictions of the kings in Middle East, in the Middle East, right? Excuse me. The the Minoans did seem to have a, a different conception of authority, nevertheless, right? They had no fortifications uh, that one can speak of, um, that, which means that basically they don't, they didn't have any many enemies, right? Um, they had high quality indoor plumbing and so on and so forth. And we have, we, we think, we suspect that we have found the throne of King Minos, which is, as you can see, very, very unimposing, right? Um, it, is, it is, in fact, very uh, sort of um, matter of fact, right? And, and therefore, we suppose that um, their conception of authority, the Minoan conception of authority, right, was different than the conception of authority in North, in Africa and in Western Asia, right? 
So Thucydides, who is an Athenian historian of 5th century, you know, like 1500 after what we are talking about, right, talks about their background, right, their ancient history, right, and he writes that the Minoan king had ruled a thalassocracy, right, thalassa, right, meaning sea, and kretin, meaning to rule or an empire of the sea, yeah, um, thalassocracy, like democracy, like, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, um, well, tyranny does not count, yeah, it's same, same kind of idea, right? Um, well, uh, to see this, right, our authors say he was correct because, you know, um, th this was a sea empire, right? Um, uh, for a millennium, which is an exaggeration, we have half a millennium, actually, yeah, the Minoans controlled shipping, right, around the central Mediterranean and the Asian, right, um, therefore Minoan merchants, right, um, traded, yeah, with the Hittites, with the Egyptians, with the, with the Assyrians, with, you know, um, you name it, with Mesopotamians and so on and so forth, right, uh, so this is the height of their civilization, right, as you see it coincides with Middle Kingdom, right, and, and of course Hittite and Assyrian kingdoms, right? Crete also, as you can see, right? It was, it was, it was nicely located in the, in the, in the, uh, in the Mediterranean Sea, right? Uh, it was, it had a strategic position and it was close to everything, right? So therefore it became a magnet for the collection of resources and their redistribution. So they're basically, you can imagine them as middlemen, I believe, right? Um, anyway, um, and um, well, and then their artistic style, right, was what actually uh, influenced, uh, it had influence in Nile and the Levant. Levant means land of the, those of you who know, French or Spanish? Oh, my friends. Um, okay, land of the rising sun, right? From Leve, yeah? Um, you know European languages, French or, uh, or Spanish, uh, Speakers definitely will understand what we are talking about. Okay, so, and this is the late Bronze Age of, of, um, of the sort of uh, Asian uh, um, world, right? But the late Bronze Age, we see we are talking about the Mycenaeans already. We are not talking about the Minoans anymore. So we are moving to Mycenae, right? Not, you know, we will, we will get to what is happening on this part of the world and uh, later on as well, right? But um, we more or less took this part of the world to this uh, uh, time period and now we, we are going to, you know, we are basically getting close to that in the Asian Sea, right? So this is, you know, another island that was very famous as far as Minoan islands are concerned was, of course, the beautiful island of Santorini, where we think a major earthquake, right, destroyed the whole Minoan civilization circa 500, right, 1500 BCE, I'm sorry. So you see, a, a, you know, a happy life, the depiction of a happy life usually, in, in in Christian art, right? Well, of course you'll be happy living in those beautiful islands of, of um, you will see a specimen of the, of the Mediterranean, yeah? Um, anyway, um, especially now, especially now. <laughs> uh, anyway, my friends, uh, so you see the children boxing, yeah? 
So before you think that boxing is a new uh, modern sport, think again, yes. And this is the island of Santorini, where a major, major earthquake and the ashes that spread as a result of it is basically uh, said to have destroyed the uh, Minoan civilization, right? Uh, and you see the island of Rhodes, which is also very important. This is Crete, Rhodes. And this is Santorini, Santorini, yeah, the island. And this is Santorini now, right? I wish I could take the whole class there, right? And um, my friends, um, okay. So, so, and and this is a depiction of the women of Kenosis, right? Yeah, again, you see beautiful women in in various poses, perhaps dancing, right? Uh, and with with beautiful jewelry, right? These seem to be pearls, which probably are coming from the Persian Gulf um, area. Okay, what did um, what did uh, the Minoans produce? Yeah, they had textile, pottery, and with the metals that they got from here and there, metal work, right? But they had, you know, sophisticated indoor probing, Right, the 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 city itself covers several acres, several acres, right, and hundreds of room, right, which must have inspired the story of the labyrinth. What did they? Um, what was their religion? Hmm. Now we don't know again, right? But they, we think they probably had a form of um, bull worship, right? Um, a god in the form of a bull or a bull man, right? There we have some evidence that they um, they practice human sacrifice, okay? Don't ask me why, I can't tell you. Um, and then, um, but, but, but uh, you know, it, the, the whole culture, right, remains mysterious because their language has yet to be, to be decoded. So, and this is the uh, scene of children, um, play, I mean, bullfighting, Right, and this is an um, this is the original scene, right? Fresco from Kenosis. I mean, look at it, my friend. Yeah. Um, okay, we can't see it properly from here, but this is an artistic recreation of it, and you see how beautiful it is. Yeah. So okay. So what is their script? What is it, uh, the script of the Minoan civilization, which we have not been able to decipher yet? Well, we are dealing with linear A and B scripts. <clears throat> linear A is the script of the Minoans. It was discovered by Evans, but Evans could not decipher it. Li the language, the script of, of the Minoans and that's why we don't know much about them, right? We can, we can, we cannot identify. We cannot read their script because we have not deciphered linear A. Unlike, you know, the fact that we have deciphered, for instance, um, Sumerian, right? Um, for instance, yeah. Um, anyway, has not been deciphered, but we know that is uh, the and connected to the language of the my the script of my Mycenaeans, which are which is linear B, about which we know much more. I mean, we have which we have we have deciphered, and therefore we know more about the Mycenaean culture. So this is an example of a linear A tablet, my friends. You see, we have already a lot of abstractions. Right, a lot of abstractions, and we are we are somewhat getting close to a, a um, sort of a letter um, sort of um, a system of um, system of uh, writing, right? And of course, you, yeah, you see. Therefore, we have this, right? Um, this is the way linear A, which has not been deciphered, looks like. Linear B, used in Mycenaean Greeks, has been deciphered, right? B, ha A, no, B, yes, right? Has been um, deci uh, deciphered, and it shows the Minoan commercial activity in mainland Greece, right? And this is an example of linear B script, 
right, which has been deciphered. But in, in this linear A, for instance, we have the Phaistos disk, right? It's a disk of fired clay, right, from, from the palace of Phaistos on the Crete island, right? And late Mid uh, Minoan um, period, right, in the Bronze Age, Say circa 14, 1500 BCE, right? But we don't know what it is, right? Because unfortunately, we have not deciphered, um, deciphered the linear A that is on this, right? So we will, um, um, we will talk about the Mycenaeans in, um, um, in, uh, in the um, coming module. Uh, my friends. For now, uh, this has become a long one. I hope you stop it in the middle as, 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 al as always, you know, and when you get tired, don't listen to me when you're tired, right? As I don't lecture for you when I'm tired until I am, <laughs> at the end of the lecture, I get tired. But anyway, uh, I bid you farewell, my friends, until the next um, lecture. Take care.